Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. We invite you, those who are able to kneel with us in a time of confession and forgiveness. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. I invite you to stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. The prayer of the day is a prayer for the second Sunday in Lent. Please join me as we pray. O oh God, our leader and guide, in the waters of baptism, you bring us to new birth to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. A few announcements as we continue. First off, um, tonight at 6 o'clock at Shoney's, we will meet again for the Bishop's Bible Study. We invite everybody to come out um, and to enjoy that evening. Hopefully tonight I will actually be able to be with you as well. Also, Wednesday nights, we have been doing um, our Holden evening prayer, our soup supper before. This past Wednesday, um, a few folks met to pray the labyrinth um, together. That will be happening every Wednesday night before um, soup supper at 5 o'clock here. And we have an inside track that maybe this week um, we actually have um, a labyrinth that we can unfold and that folks can walk. So make plans to come out on Wednesday um, and bring your favorite Bible verses with you and we will work on praying the labyrinth. Also um, for Wednesday night um, for those following along and we are working through the small catechism during Holden Evening Prayer it'll be the Creed so if you want to refresh yourself on the Creed please feel free to do so. All right everybody's freaking out. There are places in the world where you can't find toilet paper. Not quite sure why. Um, why everyone's going out and getting toilet paper because of the coronavirus. But I've seen pictures from friends that their stores are empty. So what are we doing here about the coronavirus? First off, if you're sick, stay home. Literally. By Monday at the latest, you can watch us on YouTube. We'll be fine. Second thing is, if you are uncomfortable, please make sure that during the passing of the peace, bump elbows, do the foot touch, wave at each other. Y'all, we don't have to get all up close and personal to share the peace. The reality is, is we don't have it going around here. We have no cases in the area. It's better to be safe than sorry, but I will let you in on a secret. If you get to Meyer or Walmart and the line's really long, if you cough and say, man, I haven't felt right since I went to China, <laughs> the line gets empty really quick. So I'm just saying, you know, if you need to use it to your advantage, please feel free to do so. Um, you know, it's, it, it, there's been lots of conversation. Um, I know Ryan and I have had some conversation. I've said it in some other conversations um, that the 
county is well aware of everything going on state-wise and region-wise. So everyone, just be smart. Um, just, just be smart about it. Don't be crazy. And if you are really uncomfortable about it, seriously, no one's going to be offended if you just go, hey, peace, y'all. Um, I'm good over here in my own little corner. Um, and so, you know, we're not going to do anything extraordinary. Just be smart. Um, anything else that I may have missed? If not, let's hear the word of God. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 12. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of the Lord. We will now read Psalm 121 responsively. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The second reading is from Romans chapters, chapter 4. Then what then are we to say was gained by Abraham our ancestor according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. And in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. St. John writes, Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, 
Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sounds of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated. Any of our young folks who wish to come forward at this time may do so. So we hear some amazing promises today about how God will make people an incredible nation and how God will do all sorts of stuff about how God so loved the world. We hear all of these really cool things. And one of the things that I hear when we put all of this stuff together is just how active God is. You see, God doesn't just react to what we do God acts first. If we go all the way back to the very beginning, all the way back to the time of creation in Genesis, God speaks and there is creation. We go all the way through everything in the Bible. And the one thing that is constantly true is God does God's work for us. God loves, so we love. God forgives, so we forgive. God speaks truth, and so we speak that truth of God's love. There are going to be times in your life where you're going to hear people say, if only you do this, then God will love you. It's not true. God loves you. It's promised to us all through God's word. It's promised to us in baptism, as some of us talked about yesterday at First Communion. It's promised to us in communion that God loves us. Even those times where folks don't think we're all that lovable. Even those times where we do those things that may upset God. God continues to call us back the place of the cross where he shows his love to the place of baptism where he shows his mercy to the place of worship where we are free to sing his praise always remember no matter where you go no matter what you do no matter what this life throws at you that God loves you Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we give you thanks for your grace, for your mercy, for your love. Help us, Lord, to walk in that love, to walk in faith, to walk with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, y'all. You can head back, and we will sing our hymn of the day.
So an invitation for everybody as well. As we are wrapping up our catechism year on our study of scripture, um, the kids have a special request. They want to take a little bit of an in-depth look at the book of Revelation. So we're going to be doing that the next couple of Sundays um, during our catechism for all out in Luther Hall during Sunday school. So if you want to come um, and be a part of our Revelation discussion, please feel free to do so. Also, for those of you who look at calendars and due dates, yes, yes, it's true. Next Sunday is Kilt Sunday, so you can mark your calendars for that one. Thank God for robes. Thanks, Kaylee. I appreciate that. So for those of you who may find this hard to believe, I was just a wee bit precocious as a child. That's the word we're going to use. Precocious you can use in church. Um, I was not born Lutheran. Um, I was born into a Methodist family, half Baptist, half Methodist, went to this, this Baptist church when I was growing up, and we had a lady who was teaching Sunday school to, oh, probably first, second graders. Um, her name was Mrs. Justice, and Mrs. Justice would have given Ms. Gerke a run for everything that she had. So we're studying in this Sunday school class about the whole idea of God's grace and God's mercy. Now, her lesson to talk to us about God's grace and God's mercy around this text from John's Gospel, she said to us that when we are born, we all have a crown because we are all inheritors of God's kingdom. Fine, I like that. On that crown, there are certain gems and jewels. And every time that you sin, an angel pulls a gem or a jewel off of your crown. And if you die without any gems or jewels on your crown, you're going to hell. Now, me being precocious, that's the word we're going to use, I looked at her square in the face and I said, so I think it would be good for me to walk out of here and step in front of a car on 23rd Street and be hit and killed, because then at least I know I'm going to heaven. She called my mom and asked her not to bring me back to Sunday school. <laughs> Shocking, right? <laughs> Some things haven't changed. Because here's the truth. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Folks, it's Lent. Jesus' death on the cross means something. It doesn't mean that we have to work harder or swim harder or climb more or try to be more than we are. The truth of the matter is, is that Jesus' death on the cross means something. What happens to us in the waters of baptism is important, and it means something. It doesn't mean that we worry about crowns or jewels on our crown, or whether or not there is heaven or hell. Luther says we have nothing to fear, not even sin, death, or the devil. If Jesus could look at the thief on the cross and say, today you will be with me in paradise. If Jesus could look down from the cross to those who were taunting and tormenting, those who had beaten and abused, those who was betrayed and denied, and say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Then I need to tell you something. You're saved. Don't worry about crowns and jewels. You're saved. Don't worry about what you're saved from. Because you see, with Jesus, that's not part of the equation. We don't have to worry about our salvation anymore. A couple weeks ago, after worship, Julie and Dave were in here and we were putting up the cross and getting things ready for Lent. And a young lady from Defiance College came in. She had called before, and she's doing a project about architecture of churches. And when she walked in, we were having a conversation, and I said, look up. And I said, if you take this and you flip it upside down, it looks an awful lot like an ark, because it is. It was designed purposefully that way. Y'all don't sit next to pillars. You sit next to ribs of a boat. 
That is the keel that we sit under. The idea is for every time we walk into the place of worship and we sit in this place called the nave, that is really short for navel, which means navy, which means water. Whenever we come into this place, we need to be reminded that we are saved. So we don't have to worry about this eternal salvation and the threats of sin, death, and the devil. To worry about somebody plucking some sort of gem out of our crown and us going to hell. Y'all, that's over. We don't have to worry about that. So if we're not worried about being saved from, then we change the question. What are we saved for? That becomes the central part of our journey of faith. You see, if I don't have to worry about fear of sin, death, and the devil, if I don't have to worry about a gem or a jewel being pulled off my crown every time that I screw up, mess up, and as Paul says, fall short of the glory of God, then what I can be worried about is inviting other folks into the boat. Because the truth of the matter is, look around, y'all. There's room in the boat. I have a promise for you. Truly, I've got a promise for you. I know some folks who know some folks. And if we've got to line chairs up and break the fire code at some service like we used to, we'll do it. I can promise you this too. We'll find a way to grow this place. There's room in the boat. And as I drive around and as you drive around our community, our county, and our area, guess what? There's lots of boats. People say all the time, oh, I'm worried. What's going to be next? Swine flu, swine flu is going to get us. Oh my gosh, the economy is crashing and tanking. Have you seen what they're doing in the Middle East? Oh my goodness, it's a coronavirus. We're all doomed. How many times has the world, has the media told us, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling? But the reality is, did you look up today? On what is, in my personal opinion, the absolute worst day of the year where the government steals an hour from me? It's a beautiful day and the sky hasn't fallen. Life isn't always great. I know. Over the last few years, you and I have gotten to walk with each other through some good times and some bad times. We've shared laughter and tears, anger and forgiveness. What are we saved for? What is it that we are called in the waters of baptism for? Who are we called to reach out to? What is it that we have been put here in this place at this time and in this moment to do? The world isn't always a nice place. It can be difficult. It can be a struggle. There can be ups and downs. We all know that to be true. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world. But from this spot, from this place on Golgotha, from this place on the cross as his blood is spilled to save all of creation. There's an old story, an old preacher's story, that after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, after his time on earth, as we get near Pentecost, Jesus ascends into heaven. And the entire heavenly host is waiting on the Son of God for his amazing return. In St. Michael, the chief of all angels who fought Satan and cast him down from heaven, looks at the beloved Son of God and says, so it's over, right? And Jesus goes, well, yeah, kind of. Michael goes, what did you do? And he goes, well, I went and I lived and I healed and I taught and I did miracles and I fed but it's over, right? And Jesus goes, well, you know, not, not quite. Well, what do you mean not quite? 
Well, we had to do it this way, Michael. This is, this is how it had to happen. You need to understand, this was part of the greater plan. And Michael goes, well, I'm all about plans. What's your plan? He goes, well, I left 11 guys behind, and we're going to send the Holy Spirit, and he's going to stir them, and he's going to move them, and they're going to preach God's word to all the corners of the earth, and we are going to let humanity have a say in how the gospel is spread. And Michael looks at him and goes, I thought you were the son of God and you call that a plan. No, that's the plan. The plan is that for 2,000 years, Christ's church has gone out into all the corners of the world and spread God's love. For 2,000 years, in places near and far, folks like us, have built upside-down boats to remind the world that the world is saved. What we're saved for is to proclaim the good news of God in Christ. What we are saved for is to be a living witness to the gospel. What we've been saved for is to remind others that Jesus' death on the cross is for them. What we're saved for is to remind people that God has called them to Christ because God loves them and all of creation. And I know we run into people all the time that we think they're unlovable, they're unredeemable, there's no hope. I need to tell you a truth, and here's an honest truth. Over 30 years of doing ministry, the number of folks who have said to me, oh, pastor, Tell you what, I'm really glad for the invitation, but if I walk into a church, I'll tell you what, chandeliers are going to fall down, the windows are going to break out, the cross is going to tip over. Hmm. Funny. Chandeliers are still up. Cross hasn't tipped over. Windows haven't broken out. Because here's the truth. God's yes is the most powerful phrase in the world. Your no cannot overpower God's yes. Your sin cannot overpower God's grace. Your denial cannot undo God's love. Your fleeing cannot outrun God's chase. That's the story of Lent. Because Jesus has set his face firmly on Jerusalem to go celebrate the Passover, to be betrayed, to be arrested, to be denied, to be beaten, to be crucified, to go to death. So that you and I can be saved no matter how far you try to run, no matter how far others have tried to flee, Christ chases us all to the cross where we find that love and grace and that freedom. What are you saved for other than to share the good news that you're saved and you know where to find the boat? Let us pray. Almighty God, help us shout to others that rescue is here and that we are saved. Help us lead others into the place of safety in your presence and in your promise. Help us, Lord, to be your children, your plan, and to share your grace and love. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand as we join together with our brothers and sisters throughout all time and place, confessing our common faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Welcome. He came down from heaven. And so was the battle of spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Please greet one another with the sign of Christ's love and peace. of tithe and offering.
I invite you to stand as you are able in body or in spirit. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, when you looked down at creation, you said it is good. When your son went to the cross, it was to save all of creation. We pray, Almighty God, for all of your world, for those that we agree with and those that we disagree with, for those that we like and for those that we find unlikable. We pray, Almighty God, for the salvation, for the redemption, and for the renewal of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, at Pentecost, the spirit blew and the church was born. Sometimes your bride is broken and battered. But we pray, Almighty God, for health and healing within your church, that it would be a living witness to all the world of your love, of your grace, and of your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we pray for the people gathered this day and for this congregation that we would shine forth your love and grace into our community, that people would know your love through us. Help us, Lord, to be in the world, sharing your grace, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you are the great physician. We pray this day for all who are ill of body, of mind, and of spirit. We pray for physicians, we pray for nurses, and this day, Almighty God, we pray for scientists who seek cures. Be with all of those who are ill, that are named in our bulletin and in our hearts, that they may know your peace and your presence, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, as our political season continues to grind on, we pray that you would help us all to make wise, informed, and faithful decisions. We pray that you would be with our leaders and those who hope to be that your spirit would renew their lives and their minds, and they truly would unite instead of divide, that we would be one nation under God. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, you are the rest of the blessed dead and the hope for the peace to come. Be with us, almighty God, who still mourn and grieve. Be with those for whom death draws near. And we pray, Almighty God, that in and around and through your church, that we may see through death the gate to eternal life. We pray all of this in Christ's name, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, Almighty God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we gather on this day, we remember that in the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, telling them, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, following supper, he took the cup. When he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, telling them, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. May we come together and pray as the Lord first taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord poured out and broken for the children of God. May we taste and know that the Lord is good. The congregation may be seated.
I invite you to stand as you're able in body or in spirit. May the body and precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace. Amen. pray with me. We thank you, living God, for the body and blood of your Son, which sustains us in the wilderness and the garden alike. As Christ has loved us in this feast, so send us to love Christ and our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you go on your way this day, know that Christ goes with you, beside you to bestow you the way, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you beside you to befriend you, and within your hearts to grant you his peace. Amen.